Welcome to part three of this demonstration of the Orchard Content Management System. In this segment, we show how to get control of content parts by editing placement files, which involves more shape tracing exercises. We'll then proceed to demo control of widgets by using and customizing layers. Finally, we'll conclude with an overview of user management and role-based authorization control within Orchard. As an excuse to introduce customization of placement files, we'll consider how we might want to control content parts that belong to our blog. For example, we have a description that precedes the entire blog on the summary page. Perhaps we don't want that description to show. Certainly, we could modify a placement file to remove it, but of course, the simplest solution should always be chosen when the opportunity presents. In this case, if I simply take the comment and delete it, save, and continue, the description will no longer be visible, the gap will simply be filled in as we return to our blog. But since we're looking for an excuse to modify our placement file, let's take this a bit further. Let's suppose we do want our blog posts to contain tags, but we don't want, for some reason, these tags to be visible to the user visiting our site. To do this, it will require that we once again jump straight into the shape tracer by examining the tags underneath the placement heading we can see what uh, placement is controlling it we see that the show tags is at footer position 31 we can also see that the placement file that is governing this is located in themes minty in other words if we go to this file and make the modification we will be following the best practices that when we do make modifications we should do it within our theme let's go take a look at that Looking at the Minty theme folder within the web matrix IDE, we can see the placement file that the shape tracer had directed us to. Once again, we see parts, tags, show tags. And if we would like to make this part remain present yet not visible, in this case not rendered at all, we can place a hyphen, which is an idiomatic way of saying don't render this at all. I'll hit control save and we'll return back to the site. I'll close the shape tracer we had previously left open and hit refresh. We can see now the tags that were in the lower left corner of the blog post are no longer visible, though they are still there in the system. But let's do one more. For example, at the head of a blog post, there is a zone that is known as meta. It contains date and it has an indication of how many comments are currently associated with that blog post. Let's suppose that we want to have this zero comments statement be located not in the meta area but down in the footer area where the tags were. Once again we're going to return to the shape tracer and we'll go ahead and select the comments area to see where this is. I'll choose the placement tab and here we have comments count which is probably what we're looking for and we can see indeed it did highlight that one item to show that we have found it correctly. Now let's give ourselves a bit more real estate with the shape tracer so we can get a better idea of what's happening here. There is a placement file associated with this parts comments count where it appears that the controlling placement is right here. Let's zoom in on that. Sure enough, parts comment count meta 5. We're going to go ahead and change this, say, to footer 20 to achieve the intended result. But before we make any edits, it's important for us to pay attention to the file in which this placement directive is found. In this case, it's not in our Minty theme. It's actually in the Orchard Comments module. So, we, in the interest of preserving best practices, rather than making the edit here, we should make it in the theme. I'll take advantage of the shape tracer display with the keyboard to select this text that we will use in just a moment. Back in Web Matrix, we'll take advantage of the placement file we had left open previously, which is associated with our theme, and we'll paste in what we had just taken moments ago from the shape tracer. Except, of course, we'll make the edit so that it appears in the footer. 
What number I select after the footer, after this colon, is only relevant if I had multiple items in the footer. If this is the only one, then the number actually doesn't matter. I'll hit save and we'll return to our view. Before I refresh the screen, we can see that the zero comments count is still showing in the meta area. And I'll refresh, and we get a problem here. Fortunately, our yellow screen of death is giving a clue as to what is wrong. And it has told us our placement file has a well-formedness issue. Let's look at that. Sure enough, we have a small adjustment we need to make. That should take care of it. And we refresh again. We can see that the comment has comment count has disappeared, but we're not seeing it at the bottom of our blog post where we expected to see it. Returning to Web Matrix, we can see that there is in fact yet another problem. The name of the zone is case sensitive. So I'll give it a capital F on footer, and now we should be okay. The footer is absent, but let's go ahead and do, do our refresh. We finally can see it. The problem solution we just encountered underscores why a hyphen is an idiomatic way of saying we don't want to show this part. It's better to do that rather than to have a part disappear merely because of a misspelling or because of case issues. If you use a hyphen, you've made it very plain that you truly do not want that part to appear. Now, while we're looking at the placement info file, we should also consider how this change we made would affect the rest of the site. Orchard allows you to have as many blogs as you wish. If you had more than one blog, it would be possible that this parts comment count, the change we've made, will now be global. It will affect every blog we have. If that's not what we're expecting, we need to put in a match condition to ensure that it affects only the one blog that we are currently uh, targeting these changes for. So I'll put this in as an example of a match to ensure that this placement affects just this one blog. We know that the match tag that we just specified will apply to the blog we intended by looking at the slug associated with our blog, which we also chose ourselves. With this demonstration of placement customization complete, it's time to introduce a new topic which is how to control widgets through layers. For example, let's suppose we want our photo gallery to be visible only to those users who are authenticated, and perhaps we want it to be visible only on the pages other than the home page. To achieve this, we're going to go to our dashboard, and we'll select widgets. In the top right corner of the page is the layers overview which shows the initial layers that Orchard comes pre-configured with. To achieve our intended goal rather than using one of the layers that already exist we'll create our own. We'll call this layer authenticated not home. I won't bother with a description but the actual rule itself we'll state with a predicated language. After saving this, we can see that it has been added to our layers overview, authenticated not home as listed. By itself, it does nothing for us. What we must do is add a widget to that layer for it to have the intended effect. We know that Fantastic is our image gallery, so we'll use the option shown to move to current layer, and this is indeed the current layer. If we look at the top of the screen, we can see that Authenticated Not Home is our current layer. So we will go ahead and say move to current layer, and then take a look at our site. We are authenticated at the moment, however our rules said that that widget would not appear on the home page, it would appear anywhere else. So if I go to the blog, now we see that the image gallery appears. Now with that we're ready to discuss user management. To, for that we'll head to the dashboard 
However, before we go there, we'll learn how to change the user's password by using the user link we see here. With that selected, we're taken to a screen where we can make that change. On the dashboard, there's more options to look at. We'll start by expanding the settings where we find a variety of items we can address. For example, under the general tab, there is the setting that governs how many blog posts appear in any kind of list across the entire website. I should point out that the ability to set this number uniquely for each blog that you create is not a possibility in the current version 1.3.10 of Orchard. It is, in fact, a site-wide setting. But I digress from our topic. Let's look at the Users option underneath this Settings panel. Here we see a small set of options that are rather typical of a content management system. As for more significant user management options, we'll look at the user command on the dashboard. Here we're given the opportunity to add a new user, and this new user can be assigned to a number of predefined roles. The roles can be edited or expanded if we select the roles tab. If we edit any one of these, we'll discover there is a list of features provided by the modules in Orchard that are controlled by this role. The access choices to allow or not allow are provided on the right hand side. In this case, to not allow something simply means that you did not al explicitly allow it. If we look at the current user that we are, admin, and we edit this, we'll see that it doesn't belong to any role at all. That's because the original account we made with Orchard is considered the site owner and has permissions throughout the site regardless of what role it is given. No other account inherently has this ability. And before I forget to mention it, we can see clearly that if we wish to change our username, this is the place to do it. And as a final note on user management and role-based access within Orchard 1.3.10, permissions granted only control what items are shown in the dashboard on the back end. It does not control what items are visible on the front end. A future version of Orchard may have this capability, and there is currently a module called Quanta that is beginning to address this capability. This concludes part three of this presentation in which we have introduced control over content parts via placement files, control over widgets via layers, and an overview of user management. To continue this presentation, please proceed to part four, which demonstrates additional core ideas of Orchard customization within the Firestorm sample website.